Hey guys, and welcome back to Just Ask Jason. This week, we're talking about Satan, or the devil, or whatever you want to call him. Who is he? Why does it matter? As always, if this video ends up being helpful to you, please like, please share it on social media, and please subscribe and click that little bell so you'll be notified when our new videos go live. Now, without further ado, here's the Devo. A pretty appropriate place to start with all this is just asking the question, why? Why do we need to know anything about Satan, or more broadly about what people would call demonology, the study of demons? And the answer is very simple. We only need to know about this so that we can understand the Bible better. The Bible discusses demons and discusses Satan, although maybe not as much as some of us would like it to. So being able to understand what the entirety of Scripture says about Satan and who it is and what it's like uh, is really helpful to us when we get to these passages. We can kind of have this like biblical framework in our minds, and then when we read about the devil or about Satan, then we can kind of understand what the Bible is getting at. So the purpose of this devotional is just to help you understand your Bibles better. Now, when we think of the devil or of demons, we, because of pop culture and movies and whatnot, think about things like exorcisms and like demon possession. And those are certainly things that scripture mentions, but it spends almost no time describing or discussing them. Essentially, the Bible's message about demons is just don't mess with them. And if someone's possessed by demons, do an exorcism. But it doesn't even really give details on what exorcisms look like. And most of our ideas of like the rituals and chanting and holy water and using Latin and all that is more influenced by pagan ideas of evil spirits than it actually is influenced by scriptural ideas of evil spirits and what they act like. So, if you're trying to understand Satan and you're trying to understand demons because you're worried about demon possession and uh, exorcisms and stuff like that, this is not going to be a good resource for you. But if you just want to understand your scriptures better and know what the Bible says about Satan, this is the video for you. Now let's get started with the names of Satan. Now, it's important to remember when you're reading your Bible that the names or titles given to someone often reveal what their character is like and tells you whether there's someone to be imitated or someone to be ignored or someone even to be avoided or whose advice is, is negative. Uh, and the same thing is true for Satan. So Satan gets a lot of different titles and names in Scripture, and each one of them is meant to reveal a little bit of what this spiritual being that we call the devil is like. So let's get started. The first name that we come across is, well, devil or diabolos. Um, and this one means blasphemer, slanderer, or one who accuses falsely. We see it in places like Matthew 4, 1. The point of this name is to tell us that the devil is a liar who falsely accuses God and followers of God. We see him doing this, in, for example, in, in Job, where he tells God, oh, Job only follows you because you made his life easy. The reality is Job follows God because he loves God and he knows he should. And even after everything's taken away from Job, he proves to be faithful to the Lord. That's kind of the the book of Job in a nutshell. So the devil is a liar. He's a slanderer and he falsely accuses God of being a bad God and falsely accuses God's followers of being bad people. Another name that we come across fairly early on is Satan or Satan. And this is actually a Hebrew word, although we see a transliteration of it in Greek. So we see it in the Old and the New Testament. And Satan means adversary or enemy adversary or enemy. God actually uses this term to refer to himself and his angels from time to time because the term in and of itself is not negative or positive. It's just neutral. If someone is your Satan, they are your enemy. Like the Super Bowl was just this past Sunday and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, their Satans were the Kansas City Chiefs. They were their enemies, their adversaries. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. It just means that they're on opposite sides of a conflict. So God actually uses this to refer to himself in Numbers 22, 22. It says, the angel of the Lord took his stand in the road as an adversary against him. The him here is the prophet Balaam. And that word adversary is Satan or Satan. 
God took his stand in the road as a Satan against Balaam because it just means an enemy or an adversary. However, most of the time when this term shows up, it means, well, the devil, this evil spiritual being. It's used 36 times in the New Testament, and every single time that it's used in the New Testament, it in some way, shape, or form refers to the devil. Now, you'll even see some people, because this is not a name, but this is a title. You'll see some people like Tim Mackey, who I really admire, a great Old Testament scholar, who instead of saying Satan, he says the Satan, the adversary. And that's probably a more useful way to think of this. So whenever you see that word Satan, understand it usually does refer to the devil, but it'd be good in the back of your head to go the adversary, the enemy. And the idea is that Satan or the devil is the adversary of the people of God. He's the big bad guy, as it were. Next, we have the name Lucifer. And you hear sometimes that Lucifer was like the name of the devil before he fell. The idea was that he was an angel, then he fell and became the devil and became evil. And Lucifer was his proper name. Here's the issue with that. It's just not in scripture. It's just not. Uh, Lucifer is a Latin name, and it means something like morning star. So we see actually in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, this prophecy against the king of Babylon, where the king of Babylon is referred to as the morning star. And without boring you too much with ancient Hebrew prophecy, the term star was often used to refer both to angelic beings and to kings. So Isaiah 14 is kind of making this comparison where it's saying that the rebellion of the king of Babylon is somewhat like the rebellion of the Satan, of the devil. And it's kind of comparing these two as like archetypal evil people that the people of God should not appreciate very much. That's the idea. When this translation was later made into Greek and then eventually into Latin, the Latin term for morning star was Lucifer. And at some point, Christians just kind of like grabbed a hold of the name Lucifer and went, yep, that's definitely the devil's name. But we don't really know whether this is referring to the devil or to the king of Babylon or more likely to both. And at any rate, it's probably not a proper name because it doesn't even show up in the original language. It's a Latin term. It got attached to him later, but it's a reference to Isaiah 14. So that one we should probably just ignore. Um, another title that we should probably just ignore that isn't necessarily about the devil, but kind of is, but kind of isn't, is in Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19, where the king of Tyre this time is compared to the devil. And this term is used to describe the king of Tyre. It said that he is like a guardian cherub. And some people took this text and said, see, this means that Satan, when he was still an angel of the Lord, was of the classification of cherub. And here's the issue. We don't really even know much about the classifications of angels and what the difference between like a cherub and a seraph is, or really if we should even draw distinctions. Um, angels are just kind of fuzzy to us. The Bible doesn't say a ton about them and about what they're like, or even much about what they look like. They usually show up in prophecies and prophecies can get really weird to interpret. So the point is, this is probably another name that we should just kind of leave and understand that Ezekiel 28 in its context is comparing the devil and comparing the king of Tyre. And in both cases, God is saying, you could have been my servant, but you refused to. That's kind of the idea being carried there. Back to titles that are definitely given to the Satan or the devil. Uh, we have the title of dragon, which is only used in Revelation. The Greek word this comes from is actually the word we get dragon from. It's dracon. In, in Greek, and it refers to a giant mythical serpent, much like you and I would think of dragons. So in Greek mythology, when a giant, evil, mythical serpent beast shows up, it's called a dracon, a giant snake, and that's the term used in Revelation. The devil is called a dracon and a snake in the same sentence in Revelation 12, 9. In the same one, he's called a dragon, a snake, the Satan, and the devil, all in the same sentence. So it's like John really wants you to know who he's talking about. The idea here is basically just that the devil's powerful, that he is akin to those ancient mythical beasts referenced in Greek mythology, that he's not to be trifled with. But the message of Revelation also reminds us that compared to God, he has no power, and that one day God will bind him and cast him away forever. Now, 
In keeping with the snake theme, another title or a picture attributed to Satan is that of a snake, or the Hebrew word is a seraph. You might have heard the term seraphim as a way of referring to certain types of angels, but seraphim is just the plural of the Hebrew word for snake. So we see, like in Isaiah 14, 29, this image of Isaiah seeing these angelic beings that in most translations are, uh, are translated as or pictured as flying fiery serpents, which is a really bad translation. I won't bore you with all of the language here, but for some reason, at some point, English speakers started translating seraph or seraphim as burning ones or fiery ones, and then started attributing them to angels. The biblical picture is just, these are flying snakes. They're flying seraphs. They're flying snakes. In fact, elsewhere in scripture, when normal, ordinary snakes are referenced, then the word seraph is used. For example, uh, at one point in the, uh, in the book of Exodus, Moses makes a bronze serpent and raises it up because God instructs him to do so as like part of a healing ritual for the people. And, and that the term used to describe the, the statue of the bronze serpent is that it is a bronze seraph, a bronze snake. And that's it. It doesn't mean that it's on fire. It doesn't mean nothing like that. It literally just means a bronze snake. So the devil and actually several angelic beings like in Isaiah 14 are described as looking like snakes for whatever reason. Um, but we can't read more into it than that. Some people want to say seraphs on order of angels and who knows, maybe, but the Bible just doesn't tell us that much about it. And I'd rather not make assumptions when the Bible doesn't give us any like concrete evidence. All that being said, uh, some people would say that when the devil shows up as a snake in the garden, that that's not even him. That he's controlling an actual snake. Uh, but at any rate, I mean, the devil has some sort of association with snakes in scripture, some sort of association with seraphs, which are normally used as like a symbol of something that's dangerous or bad, but not always. It's kind of a sticky thing, but it's sometimes an image you'll see of the devil. So if you see that term snake or that term uh, seraph, often that is an epithet for the devil. Now, moving on, early in uh, the first century, the Jews would use the term Belzebul or Baalzebub, which you may have heard used as titles for Satan. The Jews certainly used it. This is actually a reference to a Canaanite deity, a Philistine deity. It roughly translates to Lord of the Flies, just like that old book. That's actually where they stole that title from. Uh, Baalzebub means Lord or Master of the Flies. And this is probably an insult I mean, Jews would often uh, change the names of Canaanite deities when they wrote about them and change them from something that was meant to honor the deity to something that was like definitely an insult. So it's calling someone the Lord of the Flies, like that sounds like an insult, like you're the Lord of rotting things and dead meat and stuff like that. Uh, and so then they just take the title and they give it to Satan too, because they're like, yeah, we don't like Satan either. So we're just going to call him something insulting. So balls of bull, balls of bub means Lord of the flies. And it's basically a way that Jews insulted Satan because they saw him as an enemy, as an adversary, like they should. Now, other titles you might see really quickly, uh, tempter. We see this in first Thessalonians three, five. He's called the evil one or the wicked one in John 17, Matthew 13 and elsewhere. We're also told that he sometimes appears as an angel of light. Light is synonymous with knowledge in Greek. The idea is that Satan can show up and show himself as an agent for good or pretend to be an agent for good, that he will promise knowledge to people and in so doing, he will lead them astray. We see him doing this in Genesis 3, where he's talking to Adam and Eve and he says, hey, if you guys just like eat this fruit, then you'll know things you aren't supposed to know and then you'll be like God. And they're like, oh, that sounds awesome. And then they eat the fruit and that's the first sin. So again, we see uh, Satan kind of showing up as this angel of light or messenger of knowledge or something like that. And he uses it as, as a ploy, as a tool to deceive God's people. All right, guys, this Devo is already running long, so I'm actually going to upload it in two parts, both today on Wednesday. So if you just want to be done right now, you're just like, wow, this is a lot of information. That's fine. If not on the end card, which should show up on the screen in just a second, uh, there'll be a, cli or a, a link to bring you to the second part of this lesson. They'll both be released on Wednesday. So go ahead and click on over there now if you're interested. If not, come back later. 
Thanks for joining me, guys.